Hello and welcome to the Daily Bread, an aid to your spiritual growth. Have you ever tried to stop saying certain things, avoid certain topics and behave in certain ways during conversations and discover that you just can't? Or at least that it's very difficult. I'm often puzzled by how difficult it is to change behavior that seems like there should be no problem taking control over. Today we are going to explore these difficulties that we have with such a simple task as shutting the hell up. As a matter of fact the fourth way, the spiritual movement that was started by Gurdjieff, teaches that to attain self-awareness and inner transformation, one must do just this, eliminate unnecessary talking. Auspensky, one of Gurdjieff's most prominent students, believed that most people live their lives in a state of unconsciousness, driven by automatic habits and impulses. This state of sleep is characterized by a constant stream of internal dialogue, which serves to reinforce our identification with the ego and distract us from our true nature. This internal dialogue, or monologue, depending of its character, is in essence the brain talking to itself constantly. So if we want to understand why we can't make our mouth shut up, a clue is to be found in why we can't make our brain shut up. And if we want to make our brains more quiet, maybe we need to start with what comes out or our mouths. To awaken from this state of mindless chatter, whether it's internal or external, Auspensky recommended a process of self-observation, in which we observe our own thoughts, feelings, and behaviors without judgment or analysis. One of the most significant forms of behavior to observe and control is unnecessary talking. Auspensky has observed the connection between thoughts and speaking that I just mentioned. He believed that the constant chatter of our internal dialogue is mirrored in our external behavior leading us to engage in pointless conversations and idle gossip. This kind of talking serves to reinforce our identification with the ego and distract us from our higher purpose. The practice of eliminating unnecessary talking involves becoming more conscious of our speech. This involves paying attention to the words we use and the impact they have on ourselves and others. By paying attention to our speech, we can begin to notice when we are speaking unnecessarily and redirect our energy towards more productive forms of communication. Simply put, when we notice that we, for example, discuss other people for no useful reason or engage in any kind of talking simply for the sake of talking, we can stop ourselves and consciously choose to talk about something else, or simply ask questions and listen. Two side effects of this, is that we become much better conversational partners because people prefer it when we take an interest in them, to when we just talk. We also get more out of our conversations, since we get to take part of more information, perspectives, and experiences. What we in essence want to do here, is to train our brains to respond in new ways to the conversations that we are engaged in. Rebecca Nottingham, a prominent teacher within the Fourth Way tradition, elaborated on this concept in her book The Work of the Fourth Way, Turning Consciousness into Action. Nottingham emphasized the importance of mindfulness in speech, noting that our words are powerful tools that can be used to heal or harm, to connect or divide. She recommended a practice of pausing before speaking, taking a deep breath, and considering the intention behind our words. This pause allows us to move beyond the automatic patterns of our internal dialogue and choose our words more consciously. This can be of tremendous help as we attempt to retrain our unruly brains. Another important aspect of eliminating unnecessary talking is learning to listen more effectively. Maurice Nichol, a British psychiatrist and student of Gurdjieff and Auspensky, wrote extensively on the role of listening in spiritual development. Nickel believed that true listening involves an active engagement with the other person, in which we put aside our own preconceptions and judgments and seek to understand the other person's perspective. To develop this kind of listening, Nickel recommended a practice of self-observation. By observing our own patterns of listening, we can become aware of the ways in which our own biases and assumptions distort our perception of others. We can also become aware of when the tendency of just waiting for our turn to speak sets in. This self-awareness allows us to approach listening with greater openness and receptivity, creating the conditions for more meaningful and authentic communication. The practice of eliminating unnecessary talking also involves developing an awareness of our own emotional states. Emotions can be powerful drivers of our speech, leading us to say things that we later regret. 
By learning to become more aware of our own emotional states, we can begin to notice when our emotions are driving our speech and take steps to redirect our energy towards more productive forms of communication. The fourth way tradition also emphasizes the importance of developing an awareness of our physical body. The body can be a powerful source of distraction and unconscious behavior, leading us to engage in unnecessary talking. By developing an awareness of our physical body, we can begin to notice when we are engaging in physical behaviors that lead to unnecessary talking, such as fidgeting or shifting our posture. We can then take steps to redirect our energy towards more productive forms of communication. You might begin to notice something here. Namely that we are addicted to constant activity, whether it is through unconscious thoughts, unconscious speech or unconscious movement. And the remedy seems to be awareness. The more awareness we bring into our experience, the less mechanical and reactive we become. In addition to these practices, the fourth way tradition also emphasizes the importance of developing a sense of purpose and direction in life. When we have a clear sense of purpose and direction, we are less likely to engage in unnecessary talking and more likely to channel our energy towards productive forms of communication. This sense of purpose and direction can come from a variety of sources, such as personal values, spiritual beliefs, or a sense of mission or calling. Overall, the practice of eliminating unnecessary talking is a crucial step in the fourth way path of self awareness and transformation. By becoming more conscious of our speech, we can begin to break free from the automatic patterns of our internal dialogue and redirect our energy towards more productive forms of communication. This process requires patience, discipline, and a commitment to self observation but the rewards are profound, a deeper sense of connection with ourselves and others, and a greater ability to live in alignment with our true nature. The less mechanical we become, the more authentic love and connection we are able to experience. Let me repeat that, the less mechanical we become, the more authentic love and connection we are able to experience. It is important to note that the practice of eliminating unnecessary talking is not about becoming silent or withdrawing from social interaction altogether. Instead, it is about developing a greater awareness of our speech and the impact it has on ourselves and others. When we learn to speak more consciously, we can become more effective communicators, building deeper connections with others and making a positive impact on the world around us. In conclusion, the Fourth Way tradition offers a comprehensive approach to personal development, incorporating physical, emotional, and intellectual elements. The practice of eliminating unnecessary talking is a crucial step in this process, as it allows us to break free from the automatic patterns of our internal dialogue and redirect our energy towards more productive forms of communication. By cultivating mindfulness in speech, listening, and emotional awareness, we can become more conscious communicators, building deeper connections with ourselves and others and making a positive impact on the world around us. If we don't break free from habitual, automatic ways of functioning, we will live out our lives in invisible prisons created by our own minds. One of the best ways of breaking free from this prison and thus reclaiming the love and connection that is our birthright, is to start taking control over the way we speak. That's it for today. If you want to read more about our journey, our discoveries along the way and the observations that we've made about the world, spirituality, Christianity and the human condition, please visit our blog. If you want to support our channel, you are welcome to buy an item from one of our shops. You will find links to all of this in the comments section and in the description. Also, please like, subscribe, comment and share the video. And hit the notification bell, so that YouTube notifies you of new videos. Thank you for your time.